Welcome back, Sergey fans, to this February 2v2, 2000, February 2019 2v2 tournament. We are back very quickly in round four as we're going to be going on to the match that is basically the big match, the ultimate match between the two winners, Dime for and Sparkles against Manu 12 and. F Wait, who's it with? Manu 12 and 400. I was right the first time. Stinging 400. Wanted to say 400. Should have said 400 because that was the correct answer. This just started out. We are going to be on... Oh, what map is this? Turning in? No. Downpour. That's what it's called. So on Downpour, Sparkle's going for Spiders. Dying for going for Anthbots. While, same time, 400 goes for Anthbots. And Mana 12 goes for a proxy tank factory. Very quick. I'm expecting this match is not going to last too long, just considering the way people are starting to build up. Not to mention how tiny this map is. Though, very reclaim-oriented. Like, it's a map that you are going to get a lot going as far as reclaim is concerned. I mean, the center alone is 1,500. Like, your main base. Got 500 metal on the main base without even having to worry about anything. Yeah, that's safe. Not to mention there's an entire other expansion to be taken. And Sparkle, Team Sparkles, as it's called here, is actually doing a fairly good job getting that reclaim right off the bat. I mean, that's what you should do. Just take that reclaim. I really like this. Time for Sparkles just going ham on the reclaim, getting that early economy going. Same time, 400 and Mana 12. They have taken the center quite strongly. This early Ogre coming in for what looks like an Ogre. Is that an Ogre Rush? I almost feel like it is. I mean, I don't know how well it'll work against what is effectively Walking Lotuses, but, I mean, it's worth a shot. Might do something. I mean, it as will get rid of the stationary Lotuses, if nothing else. Although, that being said, Dimefront's Commander, along with Sparkle's Commander coming in, Commander Rush, Mana 12 coming in as the counter commander. Dimefront should lose that commander. Next Ogre Rocket takes out Dimefront's Commander. Mana 12 and Sparkle's running on roughly even ter roughly even health, but already Dimefront losing a commander, so early reclaim is pretty much all that Team Sparkle has going for them, and that has kind of been lost considering that they've lost a commander. They've lost four metal per second immediately without any contest. So I'm not really sure what else there is to be done other than losing Sparkle's commander as well. Because now Mana 12 along with the Commander, along with the vehicles coming in here, the Ogre coming in, the Archer providing a little bit of extra defense, and Mana 12's own Commander, which still at level 1, mind you. But, hey, get that Ogre next to Sparkles' Commander, and it is outrunning Sparkles' Commander. That should take it out. However, it looks like Mana 12, or Team Mana 12, Mana 12 and 400 just satisfied with taking their economy, just building up as much as they can, reclaiming stuff here and there. But mostly just getting as much static economy as possible, getting as solid map control as possible. Now, Team Sparkles is still doing fine when it comes to reclaim and overdrive. Actually doing quite well when it comes to reclaim and overdrive, but that center control is a problem. Because again, there's 1,500 metal in that center. Actually, now there's 2,000 metal in the center when you count the Commander Corps. Manu 12 can just take that. They are going for it, though. They're going much more solidly for, solid, for their solid static economy. Which I do understand. I mean, I want to make sure that you have a reasonably good base setup. But yeah, just reclaim this. Although, unfortunately, the commander is in a really tough spot. It does not have jump off cooldown, and it does go down. Thanks to not having jump off cooldown. Oh, a little bit too risky with the commander. So one commander down for each side. This proxy tank factor is pretty well dead. As soon as these recluses come anywhere near, there's nothing that's going to stop that. The scallop trying to come in to try to help, but recluses will generally beat scallops. I mean, it's skirmisher versus riot. That's how it works. So I don't really see any way this is going to be of any use other than dying. The tank factory, huge risk. Team Mana 12, not able to really build up that much. And there's the, ta there's the factory going down. Getting heavily attacked. That should be it. Unfortunately, 400 commander is way out of position. Now finally pulling it in to help out the fight. But at this point, center control is entirely in the hands of Dimefront and Team Spark Dimefront Sparkles. They can take out this factory. That will be a massive blow to production. Team Mana 12, despite the fact that they only have the one, well, they have the one factor close to production, they don't have a huge amount of metal that they are even now getting close to accessing, and they're about to lose that tank factory. Oh, that is, that has got to be a huge shame. 400 and Mana 12, they had a good thing going. If, if Mana 12 hadn't lost their commander, I could see this having maintained the pressure, keeping the Ogre up, maybe getting an Emissary or something, using that to help push against the Recluses. But at this point, I don't see it. And now, Mana 12 get, being given a few constructions to help with the reclaim and overall help with rebuilding as much as possible. But center control, kind of contested, but I'd say, generally speaking, it is in the hands of Team Sparkles. While at the same time, they've taken this expansion over to the western side of the map, they've taken a lot of the northern parts of the map. Their solid economy is still better than 400, despite the fact that 400 was largely focusing on that in the first place. It's just, that wasn't largely the focus, even though, like I said, Sparkles was focusing on reclaim. 
Mana 12 and 400 were focusing on their static economy, and the reclaim kind of generally wins. I mean, yeah, this main island's done, and if Team Sparkles gets pushed back and needs to reclaim more, they don't have anywhere near as much to work with. But they probably don't have to worry about that at this point. The center control is entirely in their hands. I'm a little surprised that no works have been sent to actually take all these pillars, because those statues, I should say. Because those statues are worth a lot of metal. Somehow, even though they're made of stone. I guess they have a lot of hematite or something in them. But at any rate, that is... That is so much excess, so much reclaim, not excess, sorry, so much reclaim. And again, 400 could theoretically start taking it. I mean, things are turning around a little bit. 400 still actually managing to push in with all these ducks and make it that much harder for Sparkles to get in, or, yeah, Sparkles specifically to get in and really conquer the center. But it may not matter. Sparkles coming in, getting that reclaim, and that's just going to go straight into production. The, the caretaker is already up, so excess should not be a problem. And that caretaker... Once that, get built, once that gets built up, maybe get another character on top of that, on top of having the extra storage because they lost the commander early on, so hey, even that's better. And on top of the fact that there's Anthbot Reclaim going on all along the sides, I mean, Sparkles and Diamond are doing an amazing job just keeping their economy going. I gotta give props to 400 for managing to hold on to the center with as little as they have. It does feel like it is simply a matter of time. It does feel like it's just holding on, preventing the inevitable, but... It is still holding on, and it is still preventing debt. And 400 still has access to, what, 1,000 metal reclaim? 600-ish metal reclaim. Still, they got access to quite a bit of reclaim, and, I mean, there are Anth bots. There are Quill, or Conscious, rather. This sea area is still open. Like, it's not just Dynfroin taking it. If 400 or Mana 12 wanted to take it, they could totally do that. But... They haven't bothered to do so, surprisingly enough, and I kind of wish they would. I mean, this conch will start taking some of the sea rocks, so that's nice to see. Because, again, this map is this map is designed in a way that it's really difficult for it to be over. Even if you wipe out all of your opponent's metal extraction, it's not over. And at this point, actually, 400 mana 12 managed need to take the western side of the map. Taking out that weaver, I mean, you send a welder in there, we'll be able to beat the weaver because only one of them has a gun. So, hey, how about that? Take out the weaver, take on some of the metal extractors. Team Madden 12 is still behind economically, but it's sort of going back and forth. And again, Reclaim is a huge part of that. Unfortunately, because Team Sparkles does have the economic advantage and has started been winning the attrition advantage too, it's just going to be quite difficult for Team Madden 12 to actually keep holding on. Now, I realize a lot of value has been put into Fleas, but again, that's not much. Like 100? 150? Maybe? At most? 180. So yeah, it's a lot has been put into Fleas. But the main problem here is that this expansion is quite separated. The Fleas can't really deal with it thanks to the Lotuses. The Redback will have no such problem. And Team Manor 12, again, they have a lot of Reclaim to work with, and they are making some use of it. But they aren't really able to get the lightweight units needed to take care of all these Fleas. Not with Anthbots, and they have no other factories on hand either, so there's no easy way to get rid of the Grizzly coming in here. It's going to have no chance whatsoever. Able to take out maybe one Flea at a time? That is not going to be of any use. So it's a bit of a shame that, at this point, Team Minor 12 really can't do anything just because they don't have the units. The Archer will be able to help deal with the Fleas. That is good, but it's too little too late, to be quite honest. I mean, there's a lot of Reclaim going on still, and Team Minor 12 was able to hold on thanks to that. And again, they are holding on thanks to reasonably good play, but it's just, again, it's just kind of a matter of time. It's a matter of when is Team Sparkles going to decide to push in, and push in hard, and take all this stuff out. Because that's kind of what it's going to come down to. Because once that's done, once they've taken out the Grizzly, once everything's been kind of just knocked back to the main base, there isn't really anything left for Team Mana 12. And Sparkles Sparkles and Dimefrink can just push. They even have Ravens coming in just in case, just to help get rid of a commander or really anything else they'd like to get rid of. Probably the Grizzly first, all things considered. They can get rid of that. There's no anti-air coming in right now, so there's really no contest to that. It's just going to be a matter of when. And how much they lose before they actually get rid of the Grizzly, but... Probably not going to be that much. And Raven coming in. No, Raven actually getting rid of the Archer. Okay, that makes sense. Unfortunately for them, the Archers have 20 too much HP. But yeah, if their Archers are gone, the Fleas can come in and start taking out the Grizzly again. Because the Archers are the defense, and they were doing a really good job. Again, it seems like Team Mana 12 is doing a fine job making the most of the resources they have. They just don't have very many of them. But hey, there's that Reclaim coming in again. That is the comeback mechanism of this map. And it's nice to see Team Man and 12 is taking advantage of it. Because, again, Sparkles, they reclaimed a bunch. Sparkles and Typhoon reclaimed a bunch. But the problem is they don't have that as a comeback mechanism. 
it's a risky play from Team Manu 12 to not reclaim as early as they have and as much as they should have. But at the same time, they're able to do a lot more free reclaim without having to worry about anything. Except maybe the Ravens coming around the back that will be taking out something. Going for the Nano Frame Geo Plant. Not going to do much damage. I mean, it probably will retarget right at the last second to deal, deal with other stuff. Or just die. Take on the Nano Frame and be torn apart by, hurt by anglers. That's got to hurt. But again, Team Sparkle's still way ahead in energy, still way ahead in melt. It's still reclaiming a lot. Still reclaiming enough that... I mean, even without reclaim, they're ahead. But we're at three reclaim, they're almost three times ahead. It's... Like, really, why... I just don't know why 400 and Mana 12 aren't reclaiming more. Aren't sending one or two more conches around to get the rocks. I guess it's... Like, it is only a few hundred metals, so it's not that much. But maybe not rocks. Maybe... Maybe this, right here. The commander was right there for a while. Could have been reclaiming that grizzly. I just don't understand why there isn't that much emphasis given on reclaim, given how much... You know how much is going on that would, you'd think, lead to emphasis on reclaim, but no. We aren't seeing any of that, which I find kind of bizarre. But as it stands, this is going to be pretty much it. Raven coming in here, taking out one of the metal extractors. I mean, that's not much. I mean, eventually the Ravens will likely go after 400's commander, and I think at that point it's going to be a major problem. But the anglers are up, so that defense could still hold. Ducks coming around the side. Going for the nano frames, revealing that there are coming, although I think that actually that is visible. Oops, wrong side. No, it's not visible! Actually, that was the only thing they revealing that they existed at all, but hey, they're close enough. It's not a big deal. The Grizzly able to take care of one. Okay, that's a suicide mission. Get rid of the conches. That's all you can really do. Or we can find the reclaiming conches. Actually, get rid of those. Same time, though, Venom right back flea coming in here, wiping out all of the front side ducks. There's defenses set up that would, that would prevent the redbacks and fleas from getting in further. But not many of them. Still, they play it safe. At the same time, the ducks going around the back. Looks like they are trying to find where those conches are that are reclaiming. And if they do, that will help. It's not going to be huge, because Sparkles isn't reclaiming very much either. Like I said, most of the good reclaim has been taken. But, that being said, there's still... There is still reclaim on hand. There's, most of the good stuff is gone. But this conch should be going down in a second. Actually, do they know? Yep, they know. They know. They are getting rid of that conch. That conch is done. Sparkles is losing a bit of their reclaim, but that is economy. Like, again, reclaim is a huge part of the economy for at least Team Sparkles. Not as much Team Mana 12, but definitely Team Sparkles. They've got that set up, but yeah, it's just... That's the thing. They've got it set up. they got the economy set up. they got everything set up. They've got most of the map control now. Team Mana 12, they're holding on, and I really appreciate that. I just don't see what they're doing that's actually going to take them from holding on to winning. But the Ducks harassing around the side is certainly a good start. That is going to help. I don't think they'll be able to get rid of this Lotus, though. Could be the death of them. It will be the death of them. Yeah, two Ducks for a Lotus. Does manage to be a Lotus and a couple of them, and two Metal Extractors. So not the worst trade in the world. But again, Team Mana 12 is barely able to hold on from one boy. I mean, able to get rid of a few metal extractors here and there, and they can continue to get rid of more metal extractors. There's workers that aren't really doing much in terms of having defenses up. So there are options. But now with the Grizzlies coming in here, those options are rapidly dwindling. The Grizzlies on top of the Redbacks and Recluses. This is going to be it. This is the last stand. These forces from Team Mana 12... Well, what forces? There's a duck. Yeah, this is going to be it. I should say these forces from Team Sparkle is able to win. The tiny force from Manitoba not able to hold on, but again, they held on really well. It's just not enough. Not as much metal used, not as much metal income. There was never a point in the game where Team Manitoba, or very few points in the game where Team Manitoba was at par, let alone ahead of Sparkles. And a lot of that was reclaim. Almost all of it was reclaim. You see in the beginning, especially, Sparkle Team Sparkles got a lot of reclaim right off the bat, and then just exploded with reclaim. Excess a little bit, but not by, not by much. But still, half of the difference between the two sides is explained by reclaim. Not income. A little bit by overdrive, but mostly it was reclaim. That was a huge boon. I just do not understand why there wasn't anywhere near as much reclaim from Team Mana 12. I mean, I get near, later in the game it was harder to hold on to, but especially early on, just there was so much reclaim. And the center was full of reclaim. Could have been taken. Could have at least taken it away from 
well, what was here? I mean, remember, there was a bunch of stone statues here. There was a bunch of stone statues here. That's 1,500 metal reclaim right there. That all went to units. That wiped out Team Manu 12's base. So, really, maps with reclaim like this, that's important. I realize it's one of those things that you might think, oh, well, we'll use it later when we need it, but by that point, it's often too late. Your opponents have turned that reclaim economy into static economy or just into more units that they can use to capture more territory and tear apart your army. And at that point, you're done, as we see right now. So yeah, that was the first match, I think. I don't know if the other two matches are done. That was one of the longer ones, probably. But, yep, yeah, looks like that... Oh no, not quite. Top Gang North Chilean G versus Jasper and Flores is ongoing as well. This is on Rogue's River. Because that was one of the options. Sky Fortress Sigma was the last option, but I don't think that was picked. It looks like the other match was also done on Downpour. That is such a cool name. Sky Fortress Sigma. Okay, it's actually kind of a pretty of an adolescent cool name. But don't judge me. Adolescent cool names can be cool sometimes. Are we rejoining? Anyway, so yeah, we're going to be on Rogue's River, which we have seen, actually. I think I played on it once. I don't remember. No, I don't remember the details. But yeah, this isn't a particularly new map. It, I believe, was one of the maps that was actually in the winter map-making contest, and thus in the January tournament. I seem to recall it being a thing. So, yeah, we'll be getting on that. It's a bit of a, I recall, a bit of a larger kind of split map. It was one of those weird ones where you kind of had this separation, at least in 3v3, you had the separation along north and south, but in 2v2, it doesn't quite work that way. Like in 2v2, actually, well, okay, it's southeast, northwest, largely. But actually, we're seeing here not so much. Mumble Clan taking the entire western side of the map while the eastern side going for the south. As well as taking their entire side of the, the river. Because like what was happening in 3v3 was you'd have basically a north a east west split almost evenly down the middle. So you'd have these expansions being taken by the eastern team and the northern expansions being taken by the western team. But this time the eastern team is just rapidly taking all of it, losing the southern expansions quite quick or getting it contested, maybe not losing it so much. While at the same time the northern side being quite quickly captured by the Eastern team. Some damage being dealt onto them. Flores' commander almost lost in the process. But still, it is it is enough to at least hold on to the south and hold on to the north and maintain not just an east-west split, but maintain a huge amount of value over to the north side of the map. And with that, the Eastern team is ahead 50 to 40 in terms of metal and very rapidly wiping out this entire southwest side. So Mumble Clan having a very difficult time holding on, managing to push back a little bit, take care of some of the metal extractors that have been built up in the Eastern team, threaten Flores' commander, but Flores is able to escape with the commander alive and maintain that slight bit of economy that four metal per second the commander provides. However, the north side has basically been taken by the Mumble Clan. So this is getting that more standard east-west split that you often see. At the same time, though, so many Minotaurs being built quite quickly, too. Now, this army here, that's 6,000 metal. If that goes down, I believe that is the vast majority of Mumble Clan's army value right now. And indeed it is. Or no, it's half of that. Mumble Clan's army value is... Yeah, this is half of the army value of Mumble Clan. The other half, presumably, is over here. Nope, not even half. Okay, so Mumble Clan is able to start really doing some damage to the south. Quite a bit of damage, actually. Scorcher should be able to take out most of everything here, but the Blitzes are causing too many problems. Not able to take out the Minotaurs efficiently enough. The Grizzlies, however, will be able to come in and help a lot. It, at least someone getting rid of some of the Blitzes, maybe? It's, ugh, man, it's a tough battle right now. Blitzes and Minotaurs still managing to hold on. More scout, more Scorchers are coming in to help defend, and two Minotaurs have been lost, along with most of the Blitzes. One more Blitz remains. Once that Blitz is gone, Scorchers will have a field day, and the Minotaurs will be dead. And at this point... Mumble Clan losing most of their army to that assault. That will be likely death for Mumble Clan. Again, they don't have a huge amount of army value besides this. 7,500, which 1,700 are these two Minotaurs. But some value may be gained out of this. I mean, it is pushing the Eastern team back. It is forcing all their forces in the back to care take care of these Minotaurs. Now, granted, it is leaving 340 metal corpses every time. 
But the point is, there's a lot that's being set up here that it doesn't really have to be this way. You know, like, it, it doesn't really have to be this idea that, you know, they're losing value or losing units. If attrition's almost identical, army value is definitely higher for the East team. But the position isn't necessarily great. And they could theoretically be torn apart, especially this expansion over here. These forces, up, actually these glaives alone, just go along the north side of the map and wipe out everything. So things are still vulnerable for the Eastern team. The Mon Clan able to get in now, following up from when they completely forced all the Eastern team's forces into the Eastern team base with a bunch of blitzes to take out more metal extractors. And I'm kind of surprised we aren't seeing the follow up over the north as quickly. We are seeing glaives join up with the Reavers and Ronin, but we aren't seeing just glaives harass around the sides. A bit more of a careful tactic from Mumble Clan, and honestly, I do appreciate that. They are lower on economy, they don't want to lose units. Their only real advantage now is going to be smart use of units, smart tactics, smart positioning, and harassment that doesn't put themselves at risk. Now, I'm not sure we're going to see that right now. The Glaives are coming in, they're going to be torn apart by all the fencers. Some damage will be dealt, but unless they're trying to tank the fencers so that the Reaver, the, Reaver, well, the Ronin, more than the Reavers, can get in. But the Ronin should be, should be fine. They should be able to walk in, tear apart all the fencers. Unfortunately, the Glaives all dying in the process, so harassment will be much harder going forward. But the Reavers are on the right side, or they're at the left side, which is the correct side, stopping all these Scorchers from coming in. Unfortunately, the Fencers will be able to tear apart most of the Reavers, but not until the Scorchers all die in the process. And that at least is enough to tear apart a massive chunk of the Eastern Team's army. Still, though, Eastern Team has twice the army value of the Western Team, and most of that is these Grizzlies. Actually, almost all of that is this Grizzly Scallop Force to the south. So... It's a little bit difficult to gauge, because most of the glaives coming in here are up against a much smaller force, because most of the army value is just way out of the base, way out of position. And that is leaving a huge amount of room for Mobile Clan to start taking out the economy and production. But, of course, can they get rid of these four grizzlies and and dozen scallops? And the answer, I think, is no. There's not much really set up in the back. There are a bunch of blitzes that will be of some use. But considering the positioning, that factor is going down. These are the last blitzes that will ever be built. Or maybe not, actually. Nope, no, one more Blitz will actually have a chance to be built. Never mind. Or not. Nope, doesn't get the chance. Got killed too fast. Yeah, the factory is done. So I was right the first time. And with that, the factory being done, there is still a dozen Blitzes going around, but those Glaze were torn apart. They did a lot of damage, though. The Eastern team did lose about 20 metal per second income, but they're still ahead by 15 metal per second. So not a whole lot can be done there. Ooh, nice Iris, or Cornea, rather. We had North Chilean G losing their commander, losing their cloaky strategy. Really clever idea, but unfortunately not going to be enough. Fortunately for them, though, they do manage to actually take out one of their Grizzlies, or at least slow it down considerably. And then kill it. So again, the south side is still somewhat vulnerable, but Grizzly after Grizzly after Grizzly is just pouring in. And Thunderbird's coming in, doing a fair bit of damage, but not able to completely stop all the Grizzlies, or really stop any of the Grizzlies. The Scallops are going to be in a bit of a tight spot. But as long as they just wait for, you know, six seconds, they should be fine. And even then, just walking in, because it'll take that long to get into anything. So just keep going forward. The the disarm will run out in time. Blitz is trying to do what they can to defend against this incursion of workers trying to take all the metal extractors for the Eastern team, but it's not helping. Mumble the clan about to lose the one last producing base they have. Trying to get a proxy over to the north, but oh, the Scorch are just coming in, tearing that apart at the same time. But just not enough Mumble Clan has in the game on the board right now to actually deal with any of this stuff. The Grizzlies cannot really be counted. The Glaives might be able to come in, but again, that's what the Scallops are for. Now would be the perfect time. The Glaives, there is nothing to stop them. One Scallop is not going to be anywhere near enough to stop 30 Glaives. But the Grizzlies able to deal with them, and one Scallop is actually able to come in in time. But the other Scallops, are they going to go down? No, they're not going to go down in time. The Scallops need to die immediately. And now the Scallops come back online, and with that, go down the Glaives. And with and the Glaives being gone means Mumble Clan has nothing left to keep themselves in the game. That should be a towel. There's the towel being thrown right now. And that is it. So with that... That's the last half of most... I like Danron's comment there in the chat. The last half of most 0k games feel like September 1918 on the Western Front. That's a fair point. Just... You held on, nothing really happened, and then all of a sudden, bam, forces flooding through. Like, one thing breaks, and then all the forces flood through. And then Germany has to sign away its future for the next 20 years. But, yeah. Although I say that, yet... Oh, no, yeah, Topkak's German. Okay, now that makes sense. 
<laughs> Although, to be fair, Dime Friend's actually been doing really well. So, that joke only partially works. And it's also dated. It's also seven years old. Let's... I don't know why I brought it up. They're not seven years old. Sorry, a hundred years old. It's a hundred-year-old joke. My bad. Well, it's both, really. At any rate, that is round four done. So we can just get away from the awkward war humor. And round five is going to be coming in last. So we have, right now, Dime Fern and Sparkles completely undefeated. We have 400, 400 and Mana 12 having lost once. Anakin and Hokomoko with two losses. Everyone else going one and three into the final round. And at this point, the final round looks like it's going to be... And Dime Fern and Sparkles against Arnakin and Hokomoko. Like if 400 Mana 12 wins their match, they'll be tied with Dime Fern and Sparkles if Dime Fern and Sparkles lo loses to Anakin and Hokomoko. So I'm going to check out Dime Fern and Sparkles versus Anakin and Hokomoko next round. That's the first one. But we'll have to wait for round five in the first place. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a couple minutes.